Hi there and welcome to Cartrons Computers. Today we're going to be taking apart this UBO Labs 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. So we're going to have a look inside and see exactly what makes this thing tick. So stay tuned. So before I get started here, it says right here on the back that risk of fire and burns do not open, crush, or heat the power bank. Please follow the manufacturer's instructions. Yeah, I don't like warranty, so I'm just going to go ahead and tear this thing apart. Start by prying around the edge here. Shouldn't be too hard, it's just snap construction. Okay, go all the way around the edge. Oh, I just hit the power button again. Down here. There we go. Let's see again. There, just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Most of the adhesive here is already released. And it's just kind of caught right up here on the edge. Let me get some up here. Just kind of lever that out. There we go. Ooh, progress there. All right, so now we got it open. Definitely have two uh, soft, soft cell packs here. And since this all snapped on that side, I'm guessing the other side, similar construction. It appears that I have broken part of the case. Right here, one couple of those things came out, but that's okay. I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, so if we hit the power button here, oh wow, there's the lights for it. That's really bright. Um, it even says right here, battery negative. I wonder if that's the battery positive. Let me get a multimeter. All right, so it says it's at 4.13 volts. So this is the negative, this is the positive. So now we know exactly what's the what things not to touch together. Two 5,000 milliamp cells wired in parallel. Because it says it's only 3.7 volts, which fully charged should be like 4.35. And the pack's already trying to move here a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick that in there, grab another screwdriver here, and keep levering it out. Kind of like how you change a tire. Woo hoo, woo hoo. Okay, definitely uh, cracking it wide open here. Uh, all right, looks like the battery is trying to stay stuck to this backside, so there must be more adhesive there. So let me get my uh, wonderful propeller. Let me just stick this down here. See what we got, yep. It's stuck right there. You can see the positive and negative wire. Yeah, and there's certainly some more adhesive. I to use this for prop, it's kind of my plastic knife in a way. All right, let me go ahead and remove that. And now, lever the rest of this side. Kind of work my way around here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is remove this screw, this screw, that one, and that one. These are really two tiny ones, and those, and try to remove the circuit board from the mechanism so we can have a better look at that. Ooh. Little guys, they like to bounce all over the place here. Put those there. All right, so now I've got four little screws there. What else is there here? Anything else holding this in? Maybe some adhesive? Nope. And there it all comes out. So we can see that, of course, our positive and negative wires. Here's the little uh, temperature sensor, little temperature probe. So here's the power button right here. So if I hit that, the light should light up. Okay, so these are your four power indicator LEDs and this LED is, shows when something's plugged in. So I just went and grabbed a couple of cords and I'm going to plug in a type A to USB type C, just a GoPro cord. Plug that in and then I will plug that into my Galaxy S8. And there you go. Shows that it's charging and that the light's on. So let's go ahead and plug in this USB Type C and plug that in to my Osmo Pocket. Okay, so it's charging the Osmo Pocket in my phone, so I'll go ahead and unplug those. So you can see it still works. That's exactly how it lights up. So it lights those little LEDs right there. And then those LEDs got this piece of plastic here. 
So this is your two charge indicator lights and then that's your battery percentage light. So that's what makes it look like that when it's hooked up up to it just like that. So let me go uh, do a little bit of research and just figure out exactly what this stuff does. So I'll be right back. One did some research and this is the uh, microprocessor controller unit right here and 16 megahertz. So it's about uh, 243 times slower than this, but it's actually only eight bits. So it's even worse and it's single core, but that is in charge of managing the battery and the charge functions for the battery. Over here, we have our 2R2 power inductors, so that's responsible for converting the voltage. Now, according to the back of the uh, battery bank itself, it says that, that this charger will output five volts over USB-C, so these power inductors basically provide the voltage, one for each of these uh, plugs. This uses the JW3633 um, little charge controller that can handle up to 2.4 amps. It's what's responsible for auto detect and all of those things when you plug a device in. Overall, the cost that I found for these was right around 40 cents. I found these here for right around a dollar. So this little microprocessor for the whole unit is about a dollar 40. And then if you couple that with the battery cells themselves, and according to my source, each one of these uh, cells right here is $12.59. So if you times that by two, you got about 25 bucks in that. Um, and that's at a retail rate. So they're definitely getting a discount. So most of your costs associated with the power bank is definitely this battery I would estimate this here to be under five dollars worth of electronic this came in a pack of two I think they were about sixty dollars I want to say Costco's got them now for roughly 39 so really you're getting quite the deal so due to the economies of scale it's definitely cheaper to just buy the two pack at Costco for 40 bucks or even sixty dollars it's pretty much worth it so now let's go ahead and put it together and then I'll give you my final thoughts so don't leave just yet double check make sure it still charges Perfect, all right, and there it's charging. We were able to do all that without destroying a perfectly good battery bank, and I'll continue to use this here on the channel for, I'm sure, a long time. So far, the reliability has been pretty good. It seems to have pretty good user reviews, too, across the platforms. I thought it was interesting to see what's inside. One additional note, this does scratch pretty easy, so if you're really worried about it, you know, lasting a really long time, that might get really scratched, but as long as you can see inside, you know, you can see the lights through it, I don't think it'll be an issue. I do like the kind of soft touch, uh, almost silicone synthetic feel that it has and it uh, looks pretty good, although the end caps definitely and this uh, shiny little blackout chrome look is uh, certainly a fingerprint magnet. But uh, overall, yeah, definitely a good power bank to get and I highly recommend it. So if you did like today's video, go ahead and hit that like button, please. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. So thank you very much for stopping by the channel and checking out this video and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.